And hello, everybody. Welcome again to Harry Man Hoaxes and Hoodwinks. I'm glad everybody's coming in strong. And uh, we have a great show for you today. And Merry Christmas. We are on the countdown, right? I hope you all uh, got your Christmas shopping done and getting your cookies done and all, all your baking. I haven't. <laughs> I'm going to be heading to uh, my hometown of Arizona, my beloved Arizona. And uh, I'll probably do all my the stuff I have to do, all the cooking over there. That's what my dad wants me to do. So let me come over here and very quickly see who we have in chat. And we have Sharon and Uncle Bones, Sandra, Prairie Fire, Scotty, former everything. Thank you for coming. You always have such good things to say. Um, and uh, so before we start, I just want to make sure that uh, uh, who do I have as my moderators today? We have Sandra here. Sandra, I hope you're going to be here for the whole show. Because I really, um, I might make somebody else. Uncle Bones, would you be a moderator for me as well? I'm going to um, have an extra moderator. Uh, let's see if that worked. And uh, all I'm asking is a little vigilance today, okay? I don't want anything... Uh, to distract us from our conversation and I want to stick to the subject and we're going to have a good, a good time with that. Uh, I do want to take the time to uh, take care of some other business. And that is to say that I am overwhelmed with the support and concern for me in regards to recent events here on, in the Bigfoot community. And uh, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm truly blessed. I here I'm doing these shows for you guys, for my 340 something subscribers. I'm here for, for you guys, because you guys make this happen and you give me the strength to make that happen. So I want to tell everybody that I appreciate that. And I am getting a lot of support and just, um, uh, Remember that uh, everything I do, I do for a reason, okay? So uh, I'm a grown-up, so let's move on, and let's have a good show. And uh, I shall bring in the panel. So today, I'm so excited, we have got the Bookwaz crew. Um, the first one I'm going to bring on is Mr. Jerry Matthews from Sa West, West Coast Sasquatch, the founder of the Bookwaz crew. Welcome, Jerry. I'm the Bookwaz crew are going to be here. I wish yeah. I had known they were coming. I would have wore my best shirt. <laughs> you would oh, have uh, had oh, matching oh. shirts, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> that would hey, be Nikki. really great. <laughs> Hi, Nikki. Merry matching. Christmas to you, love. Yes. Thank you. And to, to you too and your family. I hope everybody's well. Um, of course, we have the esteemed Mr. Thomas Steenberg. Welcome, sir. Hello, Nikki. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas. And next we have Mr. Bill Reed, longtime researcher, a little bit of a skeptic. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Merry Christmas, Nikki. Uh, glad to Merry finally Christmas. meet you in person. Well, sort of in person. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a nice little beginner chat before the show. <laughs> um, thanks for being here. I really appreciate it. And uh, of course, we have our lovely, lovely Leon Thompson. Oh, my. <laughs> Mr. Bigfoot no. Oganagan himself. Well, Merry Christmas as well. Merry Christmas. Look at this. This Sasquatch is the best. Yeah. Yeah. Sasquatch Okanagan. <laughs> Sasquatch Okanagan. <laughs> Sasquatch Okanagan. All right, it's starting. Ding, ding. <laughs> Round one. 
uh, how long did you want the Bukwas crew to be around? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you had the dubious distinction of being the first person to ever see all four of us together live. Of course, not Yay counting the me. chat people. We really yeah. did. We really try. I appreciate you guys making this work because it doesn't happen without each and every one of you. And we all have schedules and life to deal with, you know, and uh, I appreciate it. I, re I really, really do. And I know that my viewers, subscribers, they love it too. They love you guys. Um, and, and we've only had good thoughts and good, um, things to say about each and every one of you. So uh, I appreciate that. And uh, I think the whole Bigfoot community thanks you guys for all the work you've done over the years, each and every one of you. Um, Not all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Not all of them, no. Good portion would like to see me tar and feathered. Well, that goes to show that you're doing your job. Mm. Oh gosh, does that mean I'm doing my job too? Yeah, <laughs> that's a good thing to say to me right now, Thomas. So thank you. Um, anyway, so tonight I, of course, uh, sticking with my show's topic here is that I wanted to kind of talk to you gentlemen about not only um, Bigfoot hoaxes, of course, but the anatomy of a Bigfoot hoax. To really, if we could break that down into, you have this stick figure, and I wanted to make a nice little elaborate little thing for you guys, but oh, man, I just didn't have time. But if you imagine a stick figure and you have that head on there, that's the hoax. That's the main hoax. But then you have this body, which I've always kind of thought of as, well, this is the person behind the hoax. This is uh, the personality and possibly the uh, what makes this person tick, you know, their their mental capacity, their jobs, their uh, ability to pull off the hoax, these type of things. But then you have these extremities that also pull together. You've got the community who gives them the, the gas to go, you know, that uh, how many times have you seen pictures where obvious hoaxes are or untrue pictures and videos are right away accepted without betting, accepted mm -hmm. without uh, any kind of investigation done. And, you know, th that's the t where I want to take this show is that, each of you have a special gift for a certain part of that body. And I want to let you decide what that is. Okay. Um, I know like Leon is more in tune with the mental mind of hoaxers and why they do it and what, what makes them continue to do things like this. But, uh, Thomas, you know, you're right there at the head. This is this is the hoax. This is what happens and this is where it, it, it develops from. And uh, I'm hoping Bill and Jerry can come into that conversation and, and fill in those voids as to how it all comes about and um, maybe end at what you know, what's best for the community? How do we continue forward in trying to push that envelope further, um, do more things outside the box and uh, help have my channel help other channels who are researchers, who are true investigators in the subject, move the ball forward to help to discover what Bigfoot is, help discover and bring about um, true um, evidence. So with that, I'm going to uh, ask Thomas 
Where do can you I ju- think? Can I just yeah. say something? Can mm-hmm. I just say something? Oh, absolutely. If, Le- if Leon is the brain and Thomas is the head, what does that leave for me? <laughs> <laughs> the feet. <laughs> the feet. Okay, the- Bill, I really feel sorry for you then. <laughs> what does that make Bill? He's the got soul. the rear. The rear it's a end. stick figure. There's not a lot the to go stuff. around. I'm- yeah. <laughs> Okay, I just wanted to clear that up. Thank you. <clears throat> oh gosh, yeah, I know. I'll be I see quiet how now. This is gonna gonna go now. That's good. <laughs> That's a good thing. Um, yeah, Nikki, we're we're serious researchers, but we don't spin on center. You're gonna learn that pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> That's good because I wanted to occupy at least an hour and a half, and then we'll be good. <laughs> but it's all good. So, Mr. Steinberg. What have you say in this matter of hoaxing and hoaxers? Well, they're as varied as there are human personalities. It's it's what their motivation is that always interests me. It could be nothing more than a couple of guys high-fiving, saying, hey, we fooled them, or it could be monetary reasons. And uh, when it comes to researchers who hoax, um, that is simply what I call Ivan Mark syndrome. Mm -hmm. They people who want to be famous, and they want to be in, uh, I don't know how you describe it. The limelight. They they (laughs) want the notarization, but without doing the work. Basically, yeah. But when it comes to hoaxing, the the motivations has always been the same since the beginning. It's either monetary or just having fun or just to see if you can fool people. I mean, there's a whole group out there that I I like people that that like nothing more than to pull something off, have everyone make a big fuss over it. And half the time they won't even come clean. You know, they'll, they'll just say, Ooh, hey, 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 man, we got him. Hey, man, way hey, high five. Yeah, you know, and that's it. And to them, it makes no difference. Or it could be monetary, like um, like the group I was dealing with here not too long ago. And one of the videos have just come back, known as Legend Tracker. Um, I met him before any of those two videos ever, ever hit him. Hit the internet, and uh, when I was given a, a talk at the Legends of BC Day, the Myers, the guy who was running it, came and he wanted my help. And I, I and I told him, I don't, I don't care how you phrase this. This is hoaxing, <laughs> and you don't need to hoax. And uh, and uh, I could just tell by his the way he was talking to him, hoaxing a Sasquatch encounter was no worse than hoaxing a haunted house at Halloween. You know, he didn't understand uh-huh. what all the fuss was about. But when you get into research, I mean, let's face it, the number one golden rule is thou shalt not hoax. Not ever. For any reason. And part of your job as research is not only you never hoax, you expose hoaxes when you come across them. Mm-hmm. And you were asking about go moving forward. Well, in the research community, that's the best way you can go forward is when you know something that's a hoax, you expose it for being a hoax and let the and let the collateral damage fall where it may. Mm-hmm. That is my opinion. And and that's uh great. Uh, hi Joe. Um it seems that, you know, a lot, they don't play by the rules. You know, nobody has rules, everybody, but they, everybody needs to realize that we all have opinions and this is a public forum. Hmm. You know, we can uh, say what we want when we want and, and that's okay. It's okay. But I think we've kind of lost uh just regular respect in some matters when it comes to some of this, but um, Bill, what what would you say about altogether how people hoax and why people hoax? Well, I, I agree with Thomas that the reasons are varied, and I think 
the ones that are really problematic are what we would I would call the serial hoaxers. You know, and, and for example, back in 1977, we had what was called the mission hoax here by Lake Iraq. And it was really three, when I say kids, they were in their late night, late night, uh, late teens, early 20s. And to them, it started off as just a practical, go, uh, practical joke on their bus driver, who was a Sasquatch researcher. And it got way out of hand. The, the, when they did it, um, the RCMP got involved, big news, and it scared them. They thought they were going to jail. So they ended up getting a lawyer and, you know, they came up and fessed up that it was a hoax. But to them, and I'm cloaking here as, as Pat would say, I'm going to have to turn off the screen for I think. But you're, <laughs> you're freaking out some of the people in the chat. <laughs> oh, no, you have a portal. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know, they did it as a practical joke that got way out of hand. And they got scared, but they came forward. But there's probably been instances where people have got scared and just, you know, didn't come forward. And then, like Thomas said, you had the legend tracker that have no belief in, in Sasquatch. And they think it's just absolutely uh, nonsense. And uh, yeah, that's probably better. The absolute nonsense. So they don't see any any problem with it. And then you get the serial hoaxers. And when it comes to serial, it can be, you know, with our one gentleman here in BC, you know, he's got, you know, he's probably making tens of thousands of dollars on YouTube rev revenue alone, plus Patreon. So it's a financial reason to do it. And then some people do it for their 15 minutes of fame. So just like anything else, why people hoax and, and their motivations are extremely diverse and, and when you're trying to look at a hoaxer, you have to look at the, some of the tell, telltale signs, such as, is it serial? What are they getting out of it? If it's, you know, a million people watching their YouTube videos or 100,000 people, then it's probably monetary. There's a guy uh, I used to be on his Facebook group, but I really think his hoaxing was due to mental illness because in one one uh, picture he had where he had a bunch of uh, circles and he it was from Australia. He claimed that he, in the one picture, he had a Yowie, a Sasquatch, a werewolf, a dog man, and a witch. And, and I had followed him for a while and that was a, what he, what he was doing. And I don't know either if he was trolling, if he was a masterful troll or what I or what I think he was, he was just a person with mental issues that uh, really believed something was there. Wow! And I see Leon's really thinking. <laughs> <laughs> what say you, Leon? <sighs> it's a tough question to answer in such a short time to really give it justice. I agree with. Thomas and Bill, of course, but um, yeah, I mean, you're dealing with you're so dealing many with, different. Yeah, there's so many angles in it, and I think, I think you know, there's people who have done it who just do it for a, a, as a joke. You know, literally, it's just as a joke, and then it gets on YouTube and it gets out of hand, and, mm -hmm. and, and as soon as it gets into the Bigfoot arena, then it really just takes off. And they right. might have like I was thinking about today that video that came out a few years ago and it was at Christmas time and it's about these, this family having Christmas dinner and they notice something outside and their little dog runs after it and hits oh. the watch uh, that runs yeah. around. That looked really good. The dog reacted. It was <laughs> acting phenomenal. Uh -huh. <laughs> the behavior it was doing. And um, and I think that was just a prank that was pulled on the family from what I know. I, I don't know much about that video but um, mm -hmm. Uh, the concerning part to me is about deception. That's that's my forte. Is when something is done with for, uh, deception, it, it hits another level that is extremely dangerous for uh, I think the viewers at home, and it becomes a very toxic reactionary response if you call those people out. And a lot of times, what will happen is they will come at you full bore with a lot of. A lot of vindictiveness and a lot of rage and a lot of I will sue you and I will do this and I will do that. It's usually 
a barking dog with no bite kind of thing. But it can be pretty intimidating to a lot of people and stuff. So those are the ones that I really think that can cause a lot of harm, not just in the Bigfoot YouTube world, in YouTube in general. So, right. you know, uh, I think that there are people that totally come online to mock the Bigfoot community and they're not believers at all. And to them, it is a big joke and it would be to them because they don't right. believe, you know, it's kind of like people who go after people who believe in God, I guess they're, they don't believe in God. So no matter what the person says who does believe in God, that's just a big laugh party for them. <laughs> so, um, you know, how, how would you combat something like that? Well, you have to know your stuff and you have to be effective. And it's not just like you've heard me say before, or Neil deGrasse Tyson, it's not Tyson. It's not just to be right. A lot of people want to be right all the time. It's about being effective and how do you articulate things and stuff, but there's going to be definitely a clash in the system. If you are having to say what's really wrong with the system, which is the emperor has absolutely no clothes. And if you're a kid saying that to your mom and the king is walking by all proud in the surroundings of the citizens of the community, that mom has got to do something with keeping that kid quiet because there's going to be a consequence to her. Either going to jail, <laughs> slash, <laughs> you know, uh, slash uh, block you uh, <laughs> or, you know, the, whatever they do <laughs> online to <laughs> somehow <laughs> Or come at you, you're like, oh my gosh, oh, you're canceling me from being able to watch your show. Okay, right on. I can go do that stuff I wanted to do with this. <laughs> yeah, it's like some kind of crisis for you. It's not a crisis for me. I didn't come online to join the Bigfoot community. I came online to in, uh, search for Sasquatch and find other people who might help me in that process. So, right. And, it gets and I think that gets lost. Yeah. I think <laughs> our original, you know, everybody comes into the community with their own thing they're looking for whether it be entertainment or the research or being an investigator or uh, making friends I, you know there's people here who just are lonely and want friends and so we're each searching for that special place in the community and there's very many different clicks and and niches in it so everybody can usually find where they fit in where you know generally fit in and and then that will take them towards wanting to be honest and have integrity and um follow up a, a more uh a path that'll lead them to growing you know and moving on and and uh seeing where they can go next. You know, I didn't just start here. I started at the beginning, like everybody else watching these things and wanting to know more and believe in everything I saw and all of that. We all started there. And at some point you have to realize that not everybody's like you, you know, and uh, people don't feel the same have the same integrity as you, unfortunately, and they're willing to play roles and uh, create myths within a myth. <laughs> you know, it's uh, sometimes it could be disheartening for some people, but I, I think as long as it's used and, and it's brought forward to the community, then it can be a learning experience. It can be teaching people to okay, this does happen. People do hoax. They do uh, lie blatantly or they create a scenario that just doesn't happen and, and we can prove it and bring it to light. And a lot of people will be, wow, thanks for telling me that. You know, I was kind of gullible and I was uh, blinded to the fact that, you know, that tree moving in the background was just a dude over there pulling on the tree, you know, but you found the name of the guy and you found where he was and what he was doing because that there's a lot of answers out there, but a lot of people don't want to go get them, you know, um, or they want them brought to them and dropped right in their lap. So 
And mm. sometimes even when you do that, Nikki, there's a lot of people who still won't believe it. Right. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, you're right. <clears throat> and some people will be mad, you know, that you're bringing up thing wrong these things, you know, all together that hoaxes are taboo. You shouldn't talk about them. You shouldn't bring them up. You shouldn't tell people that it's happening. You should just ignore it. And I absolutely don't agree with that. You know, uh, Jerry, do you agree that people should move on from hoaxes as if they never happened? Yes and no. As uh, I'm sure Thomas would say, hoaxers have to be beaten out of the bushes and whipped into obscurity when they're found. What I'd like to do is go back to the act of the hoax itself and broaden the platform a little bit Okay. when dealing with that. And to me, a hoax is something that can be carried out in more than one way. It can be word of mouth. It can be deed. Now, the deed is, comes when false evidence is planted and such. But what about the word of mouth aspect? You know, it says a hoax is a trick in which someone tells people a lie. Like there's a bomb here and there isn't a bomb or that painting is worth thousands of dollars, but it isn't. It's a fake. That's you. That's you hoaxing somebody else. And uh, so it leads me to ask the question, what about many of these, not to pick on them, but what about uh, many of these woo sites and places? Are they not hoaxing or do they get a free pass because you can say, oh, no, they believe what they're saying. So they're not hoaxing. But how can you prove they believe what they're saying? You get my drift? It's, a, it's yeah. a complicated issue. You can't just scream hoax, 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 and point fingers all over the place. It may be a hoax. It may not be a hoax. It is your perception that comes to play in it a lot, I think. you know. And here's, here's the kicker. There's individuals out there who could care less that they're being hoaxed or hoodwinked, in my opinion. They want that endorphin rush, you know? They want to be sold that delicious fantasy. And they'll defend that fantasy against others who come along and try to say, no, 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 you're, you're off base here, you know? That's why a lot of these hucksters have such a devoted following. Because they're not like us. They don't sit around and discuss the merits of something scientifically or whether it's possible. It's anathema to them to say Bigfoot or Sasquatch is animal only. You know, that's something they don't want to deal with whatsoever or have anything to do with it. So as long as they're being told, these subscribers are being told what they want to hear from these hucksters, they're not going anywhere. So there's no need for anyone to scratch their head and say, how do they get people to follow them with all the bull they put out and everything? And I'm not picking on woo here because I'm sure there's some very wonderful woo people out there. I'm just talking about something that we all have in common. I mean, we got hoaxers of the deed in our little daily week of Sasquatch world. We got the hoaxers of the deed. That's the ones who plant evidence and, uh, and we've all had experiences with them, uh, the ones who plant evidence, uh, whereas the Wu are the ones who plant mind bombs, mind evidence in there. The result is the same. Somebody gets hoaxed. Somebody gets, uh, I don't know, some, somebody gets diminished. Somebody gets insulted. Somebody gets left out. Somebody, you know, the results are all the same, no matter which one it is, physical or the word of mouth, or the physical act of hoaxing itself. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's all I got for you at the moment. (laughs) (laughs) Do you think that hoax is a bad word? 
No, I think it could be a misconstrued word. Hoax, as far as it goes, it, it matches the definition uh, that you would find in a dictionary, which is to be deceitful, lying to somebody for whatever purpose. So, yeah, hoax fits. I think it fits. I can't think of any lawyerly uh, terms to use in its place, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, it's straight, simple, cuts right to the chase. And, uh, yeah, I know it's, uh, it almost sounds too simplistic, doesn't it? Just hoax <laughs> to encompass so much, you right. know, of the mental Thomas, and physical what, what do you think about that? of Sasquatch world. And I bide the rest of my time over to the honorable member from Mission. <laughs> I think hoax is the perfect word for it. And hoax here is the perfect title for someone who has been caught hoaxing. <laughs> I mean, it's just part of everyday life. And, uh, and in the Sasquatch community, it's so easy. And like Jerry said, there's a whole on the research end, there's a whole mess of people who who really don't want to see this mystery solved one way or the other. They like it the way it is. The endless ongoing merry-go-round. They just like pretending to be Mulder and Scully because it fills some empty void in their lives mm -hmm. for whatever reason. And uh, and like I said, like Legend Tracker, it's no, there's no, it's no, there's no, it's no worse hoaxing a Sasquatch sighting than faking a haunted house at Halloween, you know, just having a laugh. A lot of people like that, but that it, it, it goes on and on. Our job, in my opinion, other than trying to find evidence to prove that this creature could or does not exist, is also exposing hoaxing when we find it and, uh, and exposing the hoaxer when we find him or her mm -hmm. and believe me, you're going to get a reaction when you do that. <laughs> Correct. We have many a times and uh, it's, it's, it's just one of the drawbacks you've got to deal with and you're going to get involved with this. And it's no different in the Sasquatch community than it is. And I suppose the UFO crowd or, you know, sea serpent crowd or cryptozoological crowd all in general. It's it's the same everywhere. I mean, one yeah. of the biggest hoaxes have carried on. And we used to always tell our kids is about a big red fat man who comes down your chimney in a certain night a few days ago. I mean, that was just meant to keep the kids behaving and entertained. But I'm not gonna go up to my parents now and say, You hoax me for nine years. <laughs> Is that what you were told, Thomas? Well, I knew it. I knew it because one, knew it. one Christmas, all I wanted was a new Montreal Canadian sweater to replace the one that I was outgrown was torn. And I opened that package and there was a blue and white Toronto Maple Leaf sweater. And I knew Santa Claus wouldn't do that to me. <laughs> oh, and a pair of blue and white hockey socks too but santa claus would not do that i knew that <laughs> or would he <laughs> oh thomas you got uh, leon you got your work cut out i think you need some therapy <laughs> you guys can go backstage myself and bill will carry on <laughs> so i was hoaxed <laughs> I, I think this one is for the books for sure. He, Thomas just said Santa Claus wasn't real. I'm heartbroken. <laughs> no way Santa Claus would, would give me a Toronto Maple Leafs sweater than a wear than a Montreal Canadian one. I just knew that wouldn't happen. Boy, he's but my right father over your house. would. My father would. <laughs> and Leon. Yes. Something Nikki. to contribute to a hoax or being a bad word or the feelings that uh, is it accurate? Is it? Yeah. Is it? Well, um, it's accurate when it again. It's the motivation behind something. I mean, are all your parents hoaxers? Uh, I mean, it's Christmas. I love making kids just come into the Chris on Christmas morning. You know, you put all that white. Uh, uh, what's it? Uh, it's like 
I icing, white icing the, in front of the tree, and you step on it with your boots, so it looks like Santa came in and all that kind of stuff. So, kind of, there's is that hoaxing? I don't think so. That's play. You never um, met Thomas's parents, did you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, None of that well, going on at their house. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, the, the thing I'm trying to move towards is there's a there's a natural part of us that like play and scary and, and you know goofing off and pretend. And so this is the idea of the online scene. Uh, it's all about the motivation for why the person is actually doing it. And that's the idea about when you're looking at evidence, the evidence is when everyone sees the evidence, they just bow the knee. Every one of us went through the magical thinking stage just between three or two to seven years old, where we all believed in Santy. Santy's real. And then you get to about seven and that part of your brain starts developing where the sliver of logic is, which is you start thinking, how can he be at this grocery store and Walmart and Lowe's and at the mall at the same time? And he doesn't look the same either. So this logic sliver starts to make you uh, become rationally thinking. And when I look at some of you know, you're not in control of your life as much as you are. And I think people really got to get that idea. You're not in control as much as you actually think you are. You got 95% of everything you have in your 5.5 pounds of jelly that you've picked up subconsciously or by osmosis through the environment. And an example of that today for me was I, there's a new, one of the guys I'm dealing with, or a few of the guys I'm dealing with right now, they're on a new med. And I mean, if anybody knows about meds and stuff like that, I mean, they got the Latin term and the hemoglobin term and the gluben lubin term, and it's <laughs> you know sentences long to describe a, a pill. And instead of me trying to figure out, I just thought I'm not going to try to figure out. I'll hear it enough in the environment that all of a sudden one day it'll come out of my mouth. And uh, and so you don't. Your brain is wired to pick up data whether you like it or not. So. The key part for me is once it becomes deceptive, the other thing that also is, is once a person comes into an environment and uses it for their own gain in regards to knowing what they're saying, again, it doesn't have to be the Bigfoot thing. You can go online right now and watch a whole bunch of uh, fundamentalist uh, preachers that are making tens of millions of dollars a year that have their own planes, more than one, and an airport outside of their house. And uh, they're all shysters, every single one of them. The intent there is to use and abuse. Um, but when you have other people online that are more interested in the topic, and there's some fun play in it, but then you start having these other people like um, Mike Patterson, uh, Todd Standing, Ishtel. I mean, that's Canadians, by the way, you American friends of mine. <laughs> we have our problem here too. Um, it's you have to call it for what it is and people don't like to call it for what it is. It's delusional. We all have a capacity to be delusional and uh, including myself. And why? Well, because of 95% of everything I have in my brain, I picked up, I don't even know how I got it. it that's all going to be a delusional style of thinking if, as your brain tries to put pieces together of the unknown. Um, I can't go. I mean, I'd like to go into it more, but I, I I don't want to do it actually <laughs> right now. I'll do that on my other channel, but, uh, uh, but that, that's what I'm saying. I can't pretend anymore. And I think it's not good to pretend at one point, your little kid's going to come up to you and say to you, I don't know of any, maybe you guys know of any child that's ever come up to you and said, you lied to me. That is not real. People are wired to want to know truth of reality. So a little kid goes through that process, figures out Santa's all over the place, comes to their own conclusion about it because they rationally take the assessment of the data, the evidence, and they let go of it. It hasn't psychologically harmed them or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, as adults, we seem to forget that, that that's, that's what the process of evidence is about. Evidence, the scientific method is about keeping you in reality. If you're not in reality in delusional thinking and you're believing a belief system that's become a worldview for you, when reality hits your belief system, you are going to be in big jeopardy crisis because you will not know how to negotiate it and navigate through it. So this idea 
that it's okay for people to keep pretending and feeling that we're, people are personally attacking people when we're not. We're attacking what's been claimed, what's been said. If the site says to them, say, say says to us, we vet our own, uh, we vet all of our information. Well, man, if you're going to say that, then that means I have a right to look at it. And the evidence stands on the phone. Santa's not Santa because he's not in all these places. Now, that could be the same thing saying to a Christian that God is not God for a little kid. Because I don't want Santa not to be real because Santa's cool. And Christmas is cool. And we know Santa's not real. But it's kind of nice to have that Christmas spirit when we hear the music and we like the excitement. And you like making all that, those things you're showing me the other day online. <laughs> you know, there's something about play involved in this. And that's part of the thing about the setup when we came on. There's some play when we came on all the Sasquatches. There was interestingness and and trustworthiness and magicalness. And, and there's nothing wrong with any of that. But boy, um, when you have people like, you know, Mike Patterson and... Uh, Again, Todd Standing and Ishtel and that, uh, each of them do it their own form in their own way. It's not healthy. That's my concern. It's not healthy and influencing people with not healthy thinking. And um, if it, that's what it is, that's what it is. And yeah, I agree. That was that was the the point I was trying to make is that it's not a healthy thing whatsoever. People are... Um, they're using these hawksters to fulfill a need within them, and uh, the path of least resistance seems to be leaving fantastical stuff instead of doing hard scientific work to find out why such a thing happens. It's the easy way out, and, and that's basically it for uh, people who follow hawksters. It, it, they don't have to think. They just have to follow. Yeah, And don't dare question Dad. Don't you dare mm -hmm. question mm -hmm. Dad. It's like why not? Yeah. Well, part yeah. So I, I'm going to go on a little bit different angle here, and and, and I agree with <gasps> Leon. Intent is 100 percent important. And what I mean is is I'm going to oversimplify here and just say hoax equals lie. Now the thing is, you can be wrong and give misinformation. So somebody could. See, for misidentification, they thought they saw a Sasquatch. They bring it forward, and they're wrong. They didn't see Sasquatch. They saw a bear or whatever it, it could have been. But if they honestly, honestly believed what they saw, and they're bringing it forward, they're not hoaxers. They're incorrect, no. but they're not hoaxers, and they shouldn't be treated the same way as a hoaxer is treated. Mm -hmm. Now, and, and you may have a discussion with them and try to – make them understand that what they saw was not real and they may or may not believe you or you may or may not be able to, to uh, give a convincing argument because you weren't there. But that is a completely different scenario than somebody that's lying. And I, yeah. and I and it works on both sides from both us as skeptics that are examining. We have to be careful to make sure just because we don't think that the sighting was real, it doesn't mean the person's a liar or a hoaxer. But conversely, when somebody brings forward their evidence and somebody questions it, it does not mean we're calling them a liar. And if we look at their evidence and we reach a different conclusion than they have, again, that doesn't mean we're calling them a hoaxer or a liar. And I think, you know, Leon's brought it up before about communication. I know, um, you know, Pat over on Squatch Talk is... is uh, brought it up a number of times communication is important and both sides have to to be to be honest and say okay when you're using words if somebody says something don't jump to a conclusion don't if i say when you tell me a story your your evidence and i say yeah but it could be this don't assume i'm calling you a liar assume that i am examining the evidence and coming up with an alternate solution you may be right, I may be wrong, I may be right, you may be wrong, or we both may be wrong. But we need to take our personalities out of it. Don't get offended when somebody comes up with a different answer or a different conclusion based on the evidence. Leave it evidence-based. Now, the people that are serial hoaxers 
or intentional hoaxers. I mean, they they need to be. They need to. We need to go after them. And I'm not going to follow around a, a Todd Stanier or, or anybody like that, and you know, with a with a sign saying hoax or anything like that. <laughs> but if our paths cross, or somebody asks me about about their about my opinion about them, I will give my true and honest opinion of it. Mm -hmm. Right, and and I'm not. I'm not in, interested in on any, any witch hunts or tracking hoaxers down, but if the evidence comes forward and it comes to me, I'm more than well willing to say, I don't think that's real. This is why I don't think it's real. And then you, Correct. you as a, as a, as a responsible adult can look at the evidence and decide which way you think it is. Mm -hmm. And if you think that, that Todd Scanning's, you know, the Messiah that's found Sasquatch and researchers like Thomas and, and myself are idiots because, you know, we've been in it for 40 years and never found anything, you know, have a nice life. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't affect Thomas or I one way or the other. We're going to do our thing the way we do it. Right. Correct. And that's, I think how it should be. Um, the notion always comes up that, well, it's not fair. You're calling somebody a hoaxer. And so evidently there's should be a way we call out people who are hoaxers or have done something, uh, have I, put I think, out, you know, you know what I'm the, trying the to say? The, I think we do. Yeah. We do. I yeah. think we do. I mean, we call it misidentification. Otherwise, you would have hundreds of hoaxes appearing on the internet every day of the week. Because mm -hmm. how many times is a picture put up and they say, oh, look, this is a picture of Sasquatch. I mean, I, they I, have I, no I, verification for that. It's it's hoaxing until they prove that it really is a Sasquatch. And, and so a chemistry... we be kind, we be kind, uh, excuse me, Bill, we be kind and just tag it with misrepresentation instead of this person is not really trying to hoax you. I, I think what, you know, again, I'm a little bit different. I think what we're, what we're bound to, if the information comes our way, we examine it. If we don't believe it's legitimate, we put out, we don't think it's legitimate and we say why. And we give a counter argument to why, why it, it's not legitimate. And that's what we've done our job. You know, if somebody says simply, if like, just say Leon puts out a picture tomorrow that he says, this is great evidence. And I get on there and say, oh, that's BS. He's hoaxing. Well, that doesn't, that serves no purpose. But if I say, I don't believe that's real because, and you can back it up with a logical argument, then if he is hoaxing, that logical argument will destroy the hoax. But just saying somebody's lying, somebody's a hoaxer, somebody's whatever, you're not serving any purpose. You have to have to be evidence based on why you think it's not real. Correct. So that makes the big it difference between us and the woo. The woo never explains why. Quantum right. physics. When when <laughs> <laughs> Except for quantum <laughs> physics, of course. Everybody knows that one. But no, I mean, they never say why they think evidence is evidence. It's just, here it is. Believe it. Right. I mean, how, so how do you deal with, so, Thomas, how do you deal with somebody like that? Or do well, you deal with them at all? About, I was saying, then they turn to you and say, prove it's a hoax. <laughs> <laughs> I know you are, but what am I? Uh, yeah, right. You know, it's like I've heard yeah. so many people that prove Todd standing is, hasn't filmed Sasquatch eight or nine times or whatever it is right now. I just respond. I say, look, at, I'm not accusing him of anything. I'm just simply saying I don't believe a word he says. And uh, if you want to believe him, you go right ahead. It's free country. You want to continue yeah. chasing your tail? Go right ahead. Have a nice life. Yeah. You know, I noticed I, I noticed recently by accident almost today, yesterday, <clears throat> that uh, there are some groups out there. And again, not picking on the woo. I mean, uh, but uh, there are some groups out there who are woo that um, walk a fine line between this is our belief. This is your belief. You better believe our belief. And if you don't believe it, 
you're going to be in for trouble. You know, I notice a hostility is forming on the internet in some areas like that. And I think that concerns me greatly. Oh, it's around a lot longer than the internet, believe me. Oh, well, yeah, I know. Yeah. I have lots, of, lots of threats in this business, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. But uh, it's, it's just something that I, I became aware of, and it sort of shocked me. I don't know why I didn't become aware of it much sooner. And uh, it's something that I'll be keeping an eye out for in the future. It's, uh, I mean, there's room enough for everybody in this, you know? I mean, uh, whether you're, a, it's uh, psychological evidence, physical evidence, or whatever it is that you have or think you have, there's enough room for everybody. You just don't beat each other over the head with it and say, believe me, believe me, believe me. Hmm. You know? I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's fair to say that myself, Jerry. There's room in here, for, uh, enough room in here for everybody. I don't think there is enough room for everybody. Either we're looking for evidence to help us find a Sasquatch or we're not. And you can have a kumbaya belief system. I remember uh, somebody posted on Facebook a Sasquatch and it said, what was the phrase? It was like, uh, all things are possible if it's a Bigfoot. That's like saying all things are possible for God. You know, once it turns oh, well, don't, uh, Yeah, yeah, but don't misunderstand. I'm, I'm not talking about a blank uh, cart here. Uh, I mean, uh, of course, you approach no matter what anyone comes to you with a degree of skepticism and curiosity. I'm, I'm just saying there's room enough for a person who is even probably duped into thinking they have evidence. There's room enough for them, too to be able to come along and say to somebody who's a skeptic that uh, I think I got something here and I really believe it and have the skeptic saying, well, you might think it, but I don't see it. I just don't see it. Well, I, I, um, as a researcher, if you, if you basically stick to the facts and don't deviate from the facts and follow those lines, that alone makes the hoax fall apart. Eventually. Well, that's exactly what yeah. I was saying. You just used the shorter sentence. Well, not not necessarily, Thomas, because this goes. Oh again. God! No, I mean, you can <laughs> I thought we saddled this. Have, I, I have a cultural anthropology background, and if you, oh, oh. And the problem Leon, is, Leon, what one is that? The authoritarian one. <laughs> it is, isn't it? He's using the authoritarian. Uh, no, no, I've just so on me I, there. No, yeah. explain my position and why I said that. <laughs> If you look at a, a fact, Come on, Bill, I love you. What are you yeah, saying? <laughs> a fact is a fact, but the problem is not everyone can differentiate a what a fact is and the what they believe to be a fact. And it's like going back to Leon when he said, you know, all things, you know, everything's possible. And we see that quite often when people are talking and somebody will, you know, sagely say, well, all things are possible. And then everyone else will say, yeah, that's true. Well, we don't know that. In fact, if you look at the evidence around us in this world, the evidence points that not everything is possible. I, you know, The evidence says that I can't snap my fingers and create a black hole between my fingers. I can't snap my fingers and breathe underwater. Then these people will say something like, oh, well, people used to think it was impossible to fly, and now look at us. And again, there's a difference between what is impossible and what some people believe it or humans believe is impossible. Yeah, and there's, and, a, there's a difference too uh, by learning science to be able to create something to help us fly than me jump off a mountain flapping my arms yeah. thinking I can. Yeah, but fly. Bill, Bill, how does that uh, make sticking the facts and not deviating the facts? eventually makes the hopes fall apart how does that not fit into that? because, because it, if you were if you are somebody that's looking at something from a scientific viewpoint that recognizes what's being fo put forward as a fact or a non-fact it works but if you are a believer in you know well, quote unquote the quantum phys physics and that cloaking is possible it's a fact sasquatch can can cloak it's a fact that Sasquatch is an interdimensional being. 
if you believe those are facts, then they are going to be legitimate viewpoints for you. Now, I believe they're wrong. I don't believe for no, a minute. I see what you're getting at. I see what you're so getting at. So in, in its core value, yes, stick to the facts, never deviate from the fact that its core value is correct. But the problem is it's how people interpret what are facts and what are not facts. Yes, yes, I, I understand your point. I mean, if a Sasquatch walked out in front of me tomorrow, I'd be happy and ecstatic as hell. But if that Sasquatch walks out wearing a Toronto Maple Leafs jersey, I'll freak. And and that's and that, Jerry, is where my <laughs> cultural anthropology comes from, because Westerners have a different worldview than a lot of other cultures, and some of the things that we believe are facts may not match what some of the other cultures believe are facts and oh i'm, I'm quite sure that uh, we are quite uh behind it all when it comes to uh southeast asian countries and uh and such as, as far as uh beliefs and um well they have their system too uh you know well i mean you don't need to go that far do you i mean the indigenous uh indians in north america they got a totally different culture that has nothing to do with our culture whatsoever. In the, you know, so uh, I, I know we like we like to play the scientific card in North America. We like to play the scientific card. They do elsewhere in the world too, of course, but I think there are some societies that are just more open for something that's just a little off center. Of straight science, if you know what I mean. Yeah, but and he, and he it's like was, spiritualism. It's the spiritualism thing. They have a greater depth of spiritualism than uh, much of North Americans. But, but spiritualism but it's also there, there's also the difference as well with you know how we interpret things. Like for example, how many times have you heard, "Oh, well, don't go," you know, "don't go in this area because you know the native." Uh, people there called that devil's lake and then when you look at their you know when you look at their culture they never had in their belief system a devil mm -hmm. so what really why it's called devil's lake is because they had a word for that area and it might have been an unlucky area or a taboo area or whatever else early ethnologers that quite often were jesuit priests or or uh, or or that sort of thing when they were talking with them and they found it was a person, an area of bad luck or whatever, mm -hmm. they translated it to be a devil because in their belief system, that's what it would be. So now a hundred years later, we're going, Oh, well don't go near those places because they have devil in the name. And we know people go missing there. Well, the Aboriginal cultures that we're saying had devil in the name, never had devil in the name because they never had it in their belief system. Mm. And it's part of a trans, a translational error between cultures. And it's like, even when you talk to Aboriginals, there are many Bigfoot legends. We say, oh, those people had, going back thousands of years, their legend of Bigfoot. When you go back to the core myth, it doesn't line up with what we consider Sasquatch now. Yeah, 100%, 100%. Over time, we as Westerners and researchers have changed the myths slightly over time to fit. Romanticize them. Yeah. Well, not romantic, romantic, to fit our belief system. Yeah. yeah so we have, to be, we have to be working, you know, we have to look at that. And then we also give credence, like, if, for example, you hear it all the time. Oh, well, you know, the Aboriginals have said this, so it must be true. And then that same person that is looking at those mythologies, when you say to them, well, your Irish background, you know, do you believe in the Banshee or do you believe in the Leprechaun? Because that's your mythologies. And they'll look at you like you have a square head and go, mm -hmm. of course not. That's, that's nonsense. So we have to, when we're looking at this stuff, look at the evidence and treat any myth or any evidence, give it the same respect and give it the same, the, the, the same investigative techniques. Just because an Aboriginal believes something 
it doesn't hold any more water than if any other culture believed something different. A myth is a myth. And that's my soapbox on that one. Hey, yeah, and, Le and, and Leon. Quite frankly, to the back up what Bill just said, if you go to the uh, Stahelis First Nation today where the term Sasquatch was first coined and you gather around a whole bunch of the people, you get a bunch of them that believe the old stories and the old mythology. You get others who say, oh, it's probably a gorilla sometimes, and then you'll get the majority. Oh, there is no such thing. Hmm. They're no um, different than any other community anywhere else. Robert Walker says, is hoaxing for attention worse than pious hoaxing fraud? No. I don't, I've never heard of the term pious hoaxing, so I don't quite know. Fraud is fraud. I mean, fraud is fraud, whether you're doing it by word of mouth or whether you're doing it with objects, uh, it doesn't matter. The idea is that you're you're hoodwinking someone. Or trying and, to, anyway. Or trying to, for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, no, I don't think there's any difference. I mean, there's there's no degrees of fraud. Either you're frauding someone, defrauding someone, or you're not. So... I think it goes back to the motivation, though. People who are wounded do it all the time. Every all of us do it all the time. We upgrade ourselves. We try to upgrade ourselves by expand or adding to a story. Uh, you know, a, a normal kind of event happens, and I say it a few more times, and I'm, maybe I'm drinking at the time, and it's around the fire, so I want to embellish a bit more. It's it's the this is the whole p problem with our culture is we lost our sense of value and worth. And so when you feel worth less, a little worth less, you try to make things feel worth more. And how you do that is by getting uh, strokes. Strokes come in a variety of different ways. Attention, um, uh, eyes on you, uh, ears on you, listening to what you have to say. Um, there's lots of people who, I mean, I'm not trying to be mean. I don't <laughs> seem to be hammering on Christians a lot tonight, but, um, uh, I, I know a lot of pastors and a lot of pastors weren't very popular when they were kids, but now they have an audience. The audience listens to them. The feedback loop is I get strokes from that because now I'm heard. The problem is, do they know what they're talking about theologically? And um, we can do a whole show on that if you wanted to. But when you're looking at belief systems and people's personal belief systems, the problem is if you have a deficit then you are going to go back to that phrase I've been spouting off the last few, a few weeks here, which is the truth will set you free, but it's going to piss you off first because it's going to challenge your whole belief system that you've developed over these years to foundationally make yourself feel like you have more value and worth instead of just knowing you have value and worth. We all have value and worth. If I saw you guys on the street and the car was about to hit you, I don't care who you are, I'm going to probably try to do something to save you what's your value and worth to me i've never met you before other than you're another human being and there's an empathy that kicks in that makes me react to do an act of uh, compassion to save you even at the cost of maybe my own life so the idea if you and I, i'm sorry but we are not healthy or we're not as healthy as we think we are i think most of us walk around with a free-flowing anxiety and a low chronic heaviness form of depression and that, that's in us, our systems all the time. So we don't like that. This is not consciously. It's subconsciously where you're going to try to do something about that. I need to have purpose in my life. And Thomas has mentioned this before about some of these people out here, for whatever historical reasons, they are into the topic. And it, and it does give you a feedback loop. I mean, um, especially over COVID and stuff, we're all at home, we're listening to people, we're kind of isolated, so we start being curious about Sasquatch, we come online, we start going on these live chats, we start seeing these kind of style of uh, um, interviews and stuff. We get the chat on the side, helps us with our isolation and the loneliness, the two things we're always afraid of, usually because we misinterpret what those things are. And as we spend more time uh, in the event, fortunately, you're getting endorphin shots and a few other chemicals going off, encouraging your thinking that this is a good way to continue on. And then you get kind of stuck in. And that's why it's kind of important to really reflect on, you know, I am not online at all 
to be popular. I'm not on at, on at all to have the biggest Bigfoot uh, channel. I'm online specifically for Bigfoot slash Sasquatch slash Bigfoot Sasquatch Okanagan <laughs> to help people who are coming online not get sucked in and waste the time that absolutely got wasted on. And I, I don't care. I not I I I, I don't care. I, what I care about is if you are claiming anything, and I, I've said it a hundred times, if I ever showed you, like you said, Bill, a picture of a Sasquatch or a video of a Sasquatch, you better bloody well release the hounds on me. Because if you're if you're gonna just take it hook, line, and sinker, you're gullible. And that's the problem with most of us is whether you like it or not, a lot of us are gullible. And how would you know? Um, another way of looking at it is if you were in a cult and you were a cult member, the cult member is going to totally defend it as if it's factual because it's become a belief system for them. So you would ask the person in the cult, how would you know and what questions would you ask yourself to find out if you're on the right side or the wrong side? If you're back in Germany during the Second World War and all this stuff is starting to unfold for you and you start seeing people being taken away and all that kind of stuff, uh, what would happen to one's thinking process to somehow rationalize it? Well, the first thing is what we do is we minimize it. And then the next thing we do is we kind of go and try to buy time. And as we buy time, unfortunately, more terrible things happen. And then you're going to have to face the point of I'm going to join the Nazi party or I'm not going to join the Nazi party. And then as soon as you make that decision, your brain's going to give you all the data it needs to keep uh, looking for all the data it needs to reinforce the Nazi party was the one I should be believing. And now that you've drank that Kool-Aid, what would be the questions one would have to ask themselves to find out if they drank the wrong Kool-Aid? Now, that's objective observation. We don't have that skill very well. Um, how would I know the difference between what Leon is talking about when he keeps saying this thing called objective compared to subjective? What is the two differences inside of my body? How does that appear inside of my body? Objectively, you're neutral, neutered emotionally about the data. Subjectively, you're not neutered. You're reactionary about the data. And that's part of the sunken cost fallacy. I spent a lot of time. I've shared this information with my family. I have a YouTube channel with 5,000 uh, viewers on it. And I bop, 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 bop. But if my value and worth is in my channel and I have a deficit about myself, I'm going to defend it with aggression and directness. directness because I don't have a concept of self-value and worth. If I'm wrong and Thomas comes up to me and says, Leon, you're complete off on that. I'll admit it. I'll bend my knee because that's what we're looking for. If I can contact Steve from Cures Crypt and say, Steve, what do you think about this? What do you think that might be? And he comes back with something that I totally think it's not. I keep that. I don't throw any of that away. And I reflect on it and I wait for more data to come in. I'm flexible, open system inside and in the community. We're not in an open system. I'm sorry. It's a toxic system. Oh, my God, Leon, you shouldn't say that. You're going to cause problems. It's a toxic system, closed system, rigidity, control, and power. Don't ask the right questions. Um, don't, um, don't say to dad, I think there's something wrong here, father. Because <laughs> <laughs> they'll, they'll attack you. And, that, and, and we, if somebody this doesn't keep the light on nice and bright, then the problem is the darkness keeps creeping in, the toxicity keeps creeping in, and we'll be here for another hundred years with absolutely nothing. And a lot of people online who drank the Kool Aid after the last hundred years are going to be just happy as punch, thinking that they're still on to something. And that's mm -hmm. how Leon, when you yep. interviewed me about eight years ago at my old place, remember you came and yep. you were doing a you were doing a video. Yep. And before that, you told me about the incident that you thought you had. Yep. Report that. Yep. And I brought it up, but yeah. I talked to you in such a way that it sounded like it had something that happened to somebody else. Yeah. And I was giving you a possible ulterior explanation. Right. What right. was your reaction to that? Well, I'm fair about it because I know, yeah. you know, I, I'm fair about it. And that's, You weren't offended, though. You not at all. Yeah. No. Well, plus I respect, I respect the guy I'm talking to is not a moron and not a manipulator and not his ego isn't Sasquatch. Hmm. He's curious about the facts of Sasquatch. I can trust you with my heart. And my heart is, I told you, 
what I thought happened. You have more experience in this. I'm also have more experience in clinical stuff. So I know that every time you look back on a memory, if you don't be cautious, because we embellish, you will add to the memory. And if you embellish it enough times by saying the story, it becomes true to you about the story. Mm -hmm. And so uh, um, the other damaging part about the way the system is, the Bigfoot system online is, is it will get you to a point where you even can so doubt your own experience that you had because it's so toxic. Um, and so you, again, you have to embellish the, the, like the question that was up there earlier, is there something different between somebody who is, you know, and I call it wounded where they have to embellish something to feel better about themselves. I don't look at that person as with any contempt or anything. I look at that person as most people I deal with, which is a great empathy and compassion that a person would have to get to that level of being split psychologically and emotionally from their own sense of value that, uh, my God, that's a terrible place to be in. How would I know that? Because I've been in that. And that's why I do what I do today. I'm not here mm -hmm. to pretend. And and I think the problem is that people keep pretending in a system that is not functional. Um, it's not moving ahead at all. It will net. I'll just say it to everyone watching. Yeah, you can hate on me all you want. It ain't moving one iota ahead. And that's what we want. We want to move it ahead. And there's going to be a clash. The wave is coming, whether you like it or not. The clash is going to happen. I, I can't deal with a system where I walk into a toxic system where the dad's beating the hell out of the kids and the mom and pretend because it might offend somebody that they know the father and they think or the pastor and they might think the guy's really great. That's great. But what about the kids who are getting beat the hell out of them? You have to go into the system and declare the reality to the system. The system is going to totally react to it because it has to react to it because everyone's pretending it's not as bad as it is. It is as bad as what we've been talking about. And that energy that's discharged onto us when we reveal hoaxers, it's not about the hoaxing, uh, the hoaxer. It's about how terrible we're doing it. Well, if you don't reveal the reality to a system, the reality can't come back to your own personal reality. And finally, the people in the system say, which all of us have had, people reached out to us and said, my God, I'm glad you said that about structures. Because I didn't buy they were real either. You know, I'm glad you said something about tree snaps because I didn't know the history of that. And I'm glad that you taught me that. And that's all it is, is education. Is the other thing. I mean, right. Isn't our, that our main goal is to yeah. educate? Yes. It's to show people there's more to just one linear uh, reasoning or line. You know, narration. there are multiple, multiple facets to these questions and, and, it's just amazing. A lot of people still only think linear and they can't expand that thought. Um, chat. Hey, I'm way behind reading chat. Okay. So uh, chill. <laughs> I see your, your questions are coming, but I'm not going to disrupt our thought process because when you're talking about this kind of uh, thinking, you can, it's so easy to lose your train of thought when you're yeah. trying to get a point across. So I'm not going to interrupt. <laughs> I'm trying not to interrupt during those po points. So I'm coming. I'm scrolling. It's just it's coming a little slow. So so bear with me. If you have a question, just put it in in cap so I can see it easier, and uh, we'll get that taken care of. Because now's your time. You've got these four great guys here. If you have a question, please put it in the chat, and I'll and I will do my best to get it up there. Um, I have to just take care of my cat because she's really neurotically wanting huggies, and I got to get her away from me. So I'll be back in like two minutes. Well, a little <laughs> while ago, my dog was jumping at the door, wanting to come in because I locked her out. And Leon has a neurotic right cat. Asleep. Did you hear that? Yeah, well, she's just <laughs> like I am. So I'm not going anywhere. I'm still listening, but I just got to kind of get her kind of away from me because she keeps jumping on me. So be back. Yeah, you do what you got to do. Thanks. Um. What was the other uh, thing? Hey, Nikki, I, I have a question for you. Yes. Okay. So one of the things you hear of all the time about when somebody's defending hoaxers is, oh, the, and Leon brought up a little bit, oh, he's a great guy. Oh, they're so good to the community. Oh, they're so brave, etc. For you personally, 
what do you think about those extra those outside things whether he's a good person that outside of the hoaxing do you bring it into your de your decision to uh to uh, let the world know that somebody's a hoaxer or do you look at the hoaxing in isolation wow that that is a great question it's a great question because we're humans you know the majority of us have feelings for people. And I can honestly say that I always thought from the beginning of me learning about hoaxes that I would tell oh, people about a hoax. I don't care who they are or what they do or because that's bad, bad, bad. But the more that I have become a part of the community, the the longer I'm here and the more friendships and connections I've made with people and have grown in this community, I think I have come to really learn that there are different types of hoaxes. There are different types of people who create these delusions. Um to gain attention and to, to have, they have different motives. And I by no means want to say you're a hoaxer and not, I would never say that without tr really knowing what I was trying to say, because there are people out there who don't, quite have the mental, uh, maybe they're part of a spectrum, you know, that they absolutely believe in what they're saying. They know what there is. Their truth is their truth because that's what they see in their minds. And I wouldn't call them a hoaxer. And in fact, I have quite often just allowed those to slide by and not not to support them, but to let them have their world because some people have their world. And well, yes and no. I mean, just, um, hold, okay, Thomas, can I just get you to hold up for a second? I'm running, I'm running down a track here with, with uh, Nikki that I'm sort of hoping to lead her down with the audience as well. So if Roger you, that. Okay. Um, we'll see now. Um, okay. So, the next step is, as part of, we see all the time when you when you're bringing out hoaxers, is their supporters will attack you personally or attack your family. So I'm going to give you an example of two different situations that Thomas and I are aware of, and I'll ask your opinion on it. And this is just something that for your audience to think about how they would deal with it. Now, first off, years ago, and this is probably going about seven or eight years ago. There was a YouTube channel called Dr. Squatch. Now, he's gone now because there's a soap manufacturer called Dr. Squatch, and I think they did a <laughs> trademark infringement on that other guy. And that gentleman did a video called um, uh, basically calling Thomas out as one of his videos as being incorrect. Mm-hmm. And when you watch that person's video, including him almost getting hit by a car when he was crossing the road, it was very apparent that that person was decreased mental capacity. And, you know, even when Thomas tried to interact with him because the, the gentleman was calling Thomas, was pronouncing his name wrong, he was very apologetic for mispronouncing Thomas's name, but he was out there. And he was a, I think anyone watching that could see that. And Thomas, you know, had a good-natured chat with him. But in that particular gentleman, because of those reasons, there's no, you know, you wouldn't go after him. Now, there's another well-known hoaxer that we're aware of that was convicted of sexual assault within the last two years. So if you don't think, or if you're a person that doesn't believe that Supporters of hoaxers should go after 
people like you or me and our families, if you have that information that that person that's hoaxing has bad character outside of the Sasquatch world, do you think it's fair to bring into the conversation? I think it's fair if it's going to do harm to others. If it's going to be some type of physically violent or otherwise create some type of stalking or continued uh, abuse of others, then I think that should be brought up not only to the community, but to law enforcement. I mean, I'm, we always, today is a society where if you don't say, hey, my um, friend has a bunch of guns and is saying, you know, he hates his friends at school and you don't say something or go about um, bringing uh, school into the system or something, what do you... It, does that end up in a school shooting or do you feel guilty for not, you know, saying anything to anybody because you knew there was some type of issue involving mental status and, and right and wrong. And, and but. Okay. But just, just, going you know, back it, to, it's a big, you're, you're, big. Going direct, you're going direct threats and that's not. So again, this individual. In, in section one was just, somebody that's a little bit off. And then the other person convicted of sexual assault. The, the reality is that you or other people, you're never going to meet him in your lifetime. He's no threat to you personally, or probably anybody, you know, but do you have, think that has bearing on bringing that up when you're discussing Sasquatch? There's a backlash there. And the, and the only reason I'm bringing it up is because quite often when, and, and I'm using two extremes here, because of, you know, the PGF, probably the most talked about piece of Sasquatch evidence in the world. I, I don't think there's any doubt it's the most talked about. I look at the personality of Roger Patterson as part of why I don't believe that that film is real but at the same token i've met bob gimlin mm -hmm. who i believe is a truthful and honest guy and i don't think he was he was hoaxed which then says to me when i look at that personality the film is real so my and i know it's a long-winded way of saying it but when you're looking at evidence how much when you're trying to find hoaxing how much do you believe the person's personality and things that are outside the Sasquatch world should be brought into the uh, into your investigation? I think that's a great way to think about it. I'm it. There has been situations where I've known of people who had other things in their life in their background, and they uh, saw Bigfoot everywhere. Every every picture they had circled Bigfoot, Bigfoot. Here's one, here's one, here, here's one down here, the size of a leaf, you know. But I may not call them out as he's a hoaxer, but I would say I don't see that. I don't see anything in your photos. Try again. I would. Um I don't think I need to, you know, beat down somebody who's already probably struggling. And it would depend how much I did know about the history of this individual. So if I did know, you know, background or capabilities, that I guess that all takes, you know, is part of the my would be part of my ultimate decision whether I would uh, or how I would call out somebody as being a hoaxer. Now, um, if it's a situation where it's just, you know, they grabbed this picture off the internet and then they put it on theirs and say, look at the picture I got off my, you know, 
uh, trail cam and we can go straight to the source. Nope, that was taken about five years ago and it wasn't in California, it was in New York and we have all that evidence. You know, it, it's a different thing. You know, I think you can absolutely say, no, look, this is what that is. And I don't know what you have there, but that's obviously not the truth. Um, and I, I think that's okay. I think that's okay to bring it forward when you have uh, evidence like that. So, May I ask I a question? Know. Yeah. Uh, Bill, are you suggesting... Um, are you suggesting that if somebody has something in their background, I, I'm getting feedback from somebody. It sounds like um, uh, that, that that whether or not you should bring that up in regards to vetting him in regards to the story he's sharing, or not to do that. Is that is that where you're going with this question? Where where I'm where I'm going with this is that when we're vetting, and this is where when you, some people want to look at just the evidence that's in front of them and nothing but the evidence. Other people say there's more to that. You want to look at the evidence, but when you're trying to determine the validity of that evidence, the record of the person bringing that evidence forward is important. And that's, that's the question. So, Often you hear when you're we're saying, okay, that person is fake or, you know, is faking or hoaxing. You all, you quite often their supporters will say, oh, that person's a good person. They do all this for the community, blah, blah, blah. So a lot of times they have no, mm -hmm. I, those same people have no idea that that person is not a good person. <clears throat> well, and again, using Patterson, Patterson, depending on who you listen to, was he was either just a, you know, lend me two dollars for a hamburger today and I'll pay you on Tuesday. <laughs> Other people think that he was a fraudster. I don't see any. I don't see any. Um, I don't see any real uh, connection there because I mean, if we're going to go that route, well, I'll first I'll say that no, I don't believe in bringing up anything in somebody's personal life has anything to do with Sasquatch world. I don't think there's any excuse for it at all. If you accidentally turn this information up in the process of an investigation, I think you should keep your mouth closed about it. So, 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 so if somebody, so if somebody but, is but, a known lot. Let me continue. But settle down. You're, settle you're down. talking about Patterson. You're talking about Patterson. He's a scoundrel, a scallywag, and everything else like that. Made a film about a Sasquatch. You're talking about Paul Freeman, from all intents and purposes, one hell of a nice guy. Who made a film about Sasquatch? So we no, both have so films about Sasquatch. Yeah. The personality or the integrity of the person who took that video has nothing to do with anything. I, yeah, I kind of go uh, along with folks, the late what the late Rene De Hinden said. I don't care if Jack the Ripper was holding the camera that day. The, the question is what's on the film. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, that, and that's absolutely wrong. You want to look at the evidence. But again, hoaxer's a liar. And if you have somebody that's committed fraud, committed lying in their real life, you're going to look at that with the same same eye as somebody that's that has the the reputation is known to never lie and to never do anything deceitful. When, when it comes to P and G, I look at the film, and that's the only thing I look at. If you want to talk about Patterson, I got an antidote for that. I'll talk about Gimlin. Because but again, uh, uh, we're, talk, uh, okay, we're talking. Ahead. We're talking evidence. When you talk <laughs> no, we're not. We're talking about somebody's personality. We're not talking evidence. If we were talking no, evidence, we'd be talking about the Patterson Gimlin <laughs> film or Paul Freeman's film. But we're not. We're talking about Patterson and Freeman. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> well, the, the, because you're looking at, you have to look at. I agree 100 percent with Bill, where Bill's going with this whole thing. I deal with this all the time. Whenever I'm listening to people tell me things, I'm trying to put the pieces together and it's about their character. 
And so if I'm hearing people that their past character, remember back in the 80s, there was this real moral perception of who the president should be and what they should act like, and they should be above repute. This is all in Christian uh, principles, you know. Uh, you wouldn't hire a non-Christian because you could trust a Christian because of their so-called character capacity. And that's out the window now. You don't have to have any solid character about yourself at all. So you can say whatever you want to kind of say. So the key part, if you're looking at Bill, you might have an evidence here, but you have two different people that are saying it. So you're in a, a conundrum a bit, you could say, because one might, might be a shyster, but he filmed the Sasquatch. And the other person that's with him isn't a shyster, but a really great guy. So, well, and if I was to look at the evidence of the film, I have problems with the film as well myself. I haven't really shared much about that, but there, I certainly do have problems with the film. And notice how I did uh, that. But for you guys watching that, you can see this is a perplexing scratch for me. How do I? <laughs> I, I thought you. I thought and, you were imitating your cat. <laughs> yeah, and. Uh, so, but no, you have to vet the, the person's character. If you don't vet the person's character, you don't have the history for what the person is actually saying to you. Now, a lot of times when you're uh, investigating a, a witness or interviewing a witness, you can tell whether or not it needs further depth, which would lead me into investigating the character deeper. And uh, there's a difference between also uh, somebody who has done something in the past that might've been a terrible thing 20 years ago, uh, but they paid the price for it, paid the dues for it, or it changed their life to correct their character to be a better character. And, uh, you know, you got to be cautious of that as well. But uh, I, I don't think you should. I, I think it's a, a whole package. You're not just you're not just looking at one thing, not the evidence that they're claiming. You have to figure out the character of the person claiming the evidence. Because well, that's what what's skewed and what's not skewed on it. I miss yeah, that. Well, there. well, what do you do about a person uh, oh. whose uh, history you don't know? You well, know, because I'm trained in what I do, I can ask the right questions to find out what kind of history they have. And I don't even have to ask them about their history. I can just ask them certain things. Yeah, but what about that? Your investigation, I only heard about it. And I've got to make up my own mind about the evidence that's put in front of me. I wasn't there for your interview. I don't know what you asked or what you were told. Well, that's why and you that. didn't pass it along in the information that you shared. So I have to draw my own conclusion just from the evidence itself. Sure. And this is about upgrading yourself in a variety of areas, which you hear me talk about all the time about it's not good enough. Just be right about what your perception is. You have to be trained to know what you're talking about in a variety of fronts. So uh, you have to learn about interview tactics. You have to learn about body language. You have to learn about uh, reading people's micro expressions. You have to find out and you, you trust your intuitive sense. That's what I like about the Bakwa boys is you guys have an intuitive sense of being able to ferret out things. It doesn't mean you're always going to be correct, but like any evidence, you have to go through all of the evidence and there's multi styles of evidence you're going to be accumulating when anyone's talking about a Sasquatch to you. Um, I mean, again, uh, up here, uh, I mean, to sit there and listen to uh, Matthew Moneymaker claim that, that, you know, these are the best Sasquatch trackways of 2020, <laughs> go up there to his uh, Remember, the people who shared the story to BFRO, it went national news. It actually went down to the States. These people are going to be now put on the hot seat of whether or not anyone attacks them. You're going to feel kind of exposed a bit when that happens to you. And so we go up there and have to show them and we don't do it in a way where ah, you're wrong. We show them how we know what it is. Mm -hmm. And then they tell us, you know, after we say, so do you see what we're seeing? Yeah. What do you think well, it is? I think Leon, it's a in that particular case, I think you proved it because Matt went dead silent on the whole thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 And, and, and to the credit of the witness, see, the witnesses, you can tell because there's a, a sincerity of character to the witnesses. They bent the knee when they saw what the evidence was. Mm -hmm. And the problem is when you're dealing with shysters or people who are embarrassed, because that's another way of hiding things. So you might think somebody who's embarrassed about realizing they're actually wrong um, they might get mad at you or frustrated with you and they might say to your face, oh, no, you're right. And then the next thing that you know is they talk to their friends or whatever and say, that guy was just completely idiot. He has no idea what he's talking about. Uh, because that's what people do because certain situations make us feel uncomfortable. We don't know how to negotiate them. So, 
Yep. Life as a flyaway says, I would argue that there is no system. The community needs task management in the worst way. Yes, I would concur with that as well. Um, 100%. The late Paul Freeman, I mean, his background, it, oh, it, it's um, a legitimate point, but I don't think it was a deciding point. Yeah. What was deciding point for me was the evidence itself and, uh, and uh, what I found out. <laughs> uh, same thing with uh, Roger Patterson in many ways. Uh, but again, it all comes down to how you interpret the evidence, how you interpret the Pearson who's uh, giving you the evidence. And that's all part of the investigation. Because when you're dealing with a witness, it's always the same thing. There's only three possibilities. One, they saw a Sasquatch. Two, they mistook something or someone for a Sasquatch. Or three, they're lying. Those are the only three possibilities. And that's basically when you're investigating, you're almost like a cop at a crime scene. You're basically trying to come to one of three possibilities. Totally. And there are no others. And Research. you, you, Thomas, you, so if you found that there was an individual who did have diminished capacities and they were per per uh, perpetrating different types of hoaxes by just uh, pictures or and, and audio or whatever, but you knew their background, you knew that they were in their own little world and you still bring it out? You still bring it out as a as a legitimate hoax or do you go about it a different way? Well, again, I, it all depends on the situation. If you're talking about a serial hoax, sure, you're darn right I bring it out. If what was this gentle... an, innocent, an innocent guy of just diminished mental capacity who really wasn't <laughs> hoaxing because he really believed, really believed personally in the nonsense he was spouting, like Doctor Squatch. Uh, no, it was it was harmless. The poor guy nearly killed himself <laughs> making this video, so I think he's been through enough. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Trying to yeah, there's a bit of another angle too I was just reflecting on, and that is something I just forgot out of my head. Just dropped right out of my head, right on the floor, right out of my brain, out of my ear, onto the ground. No idea what I was going to talk about. Go ahead. Jerry, why don't you share something? <laughs> I think you've shared enough, Leon. <laughs> that was faster Whatever than fell out of your ear and fell on the floor, I think your cat <laughs> ate it. I'm not sure. Mine well, would. Hear the hairball, I'm sure. <laughs> Mine would. <laughs> We've got That's about not, 10 Thomas. minutes left. We really, really have minutes. about 10 minutes left because I'm going to wrap fast. a little bit early so we can all go watch our Mr. Calls and um, be there with our smiles on. Um, any final thoughts? Was this like uh, not a subject you like to talk about or think it okay. has to be talked about? Well, it's if another you didn't aspect. talk about it, your 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 whole show would be kind of uh, moot, wouldn't it? Harry Man it would be. And that's right. And yeah. and that's what I wanted to really portray today is that I'm not going to stop doing my show mm -hmm. because somebody wants to put a roadblock up. I'm not going to stop giving my opinion on whatever I want to. You know, this is a and public that's why forum. I and, say all the power to you, Nikki, and keep I'm going. I'm free to do that. Hoaxes must be, it, this is just my opinion, hoaxes must be exposed for what they are. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and it's job thing. security. <laughs> job security, man. I mean, you're going to be an old lady, a little old lady with a cane, <laughs> wrapping off the latest hoax that happened in 2043. <laughs> yeah. No, we're by that time, I'll move on to just doing a cooking channel. Like oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's Barbecue a lot easier, I think, now. <laughs> yeah, everyone's going to have a, a cooking show. Yeah, definitely. Bill, do you have any final thoughts for the show or for the people in the chat or in regards to 
you know, all of that we've talked about today. The Well, I, I, I think this show sort of encapsulates my final thoughts. And you've seen five people on this on this uh, program tonight. Uh, we're all friends, but we've very different opinions on some issues. We can debate them passionately, but none of us have got offended, nor should any of us got offended. We've challenged each other. At the end of the day, we've probably all learned a little bit and uh, still laughing and friends at the end. And uh, that's what the Sas, you know, I don't believe there's a Sasquatch community, but if there is one, this is what we should be. You know, yeah, absolutely. Other, don't take it personal and get better. Simple absolutely. Yeah. Correct. And these, if I may say so, Mickey, the, these yes. three dudes right here, they're the best around in their individual talents and fields and whatever. They are the best. I'm very proud to know these guys. Uh, I mean, uh, like they say, if you want to be good at what you do, surround yourself with the best. And I think in Thomas and Bill and Leon, man, what more could you want, eh? A cooking April. show with all of you guys. <laughs> in April, with no clothes on. <laughs> Oh my! <laughs> Canadian okay, cuisine. That, 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 <laughs> Donald, you won the internet today. Yes, you did. <laughs> ding, ding, you win the prize. Donald wins the prize. Best comment of the night. So, uh, my last thoughts, if I may, vet everybody. Nothing sacred. It doesn't matter who the person is. Vet them. Make sure they know what they're talking about. And if they don't say why it is what it is, they probably have nothing to say to begin with for you to listen to. Not just a narration about what they think it is. If they don't exactly explain how they know it's of a Sasquatch. There's probably nothing there for you to listen to. Try that one for a, for a few months. New Year's coming up. That's what you should have asked us. <laughs> What's a good New Year's resolution for squatchers out there? Oh my there? goodness. Stick to the yeah. facts. Don't deviate from the facts. <laughs> there you go. How about that? Let's try that. I'm, one. Always gonna I'm going to get that in place on excellent, my shorts. Excellent <laughs> saying, Leon. You, that's yours. The boxers. My wise person told me that one time. <laughs> by the way, really... by the way Merry, Merry Christmas to everybody in chat. If we don't get to see each other eye to eye before then on some other show. I just want to wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, guys. Yes, to, to everybody in the chat, thank you for coming and watching and supporting. Please hit that like button over there. She's awfully lonely. And uh, share my show around. Facebook is kind of funny about me sharing. So if you if you like my content and you want me to bring you more for the new year, please take it to your groups. We all are in like 10 or 15 groups at least. Um, share me around, let people know I have this channel. I would so appreciate it. Um, hit that subscribe button. Uh, really, I could bring so much more, you know, if I knew you guys really want it and I'm here for the, for the ones I, I do have, and I appreciate each and every one of you. Um, uh, oh, one last bit. I am not having a show. Christmas. Okay. On uh, December 26th. So next week there is not going to be a show. I'm traveling to Arizona to go see my dad, but I'll jump on to whoever's show if I can have a good Wi-Fi signal. <laughs> so, um, but I don't think I can support a, you know, a bunch of people on, oh, out there. And with that, I'd like to say adieu to everybody. Bye. Thank you guys for coming. Thanks, Nick.